Hello, my name is Roger Pressman. For over the past 30 years, I've been a software engineer, a manager, a professor, a consultant, and an author, all focusing on software engineering issues. Today, we're going to be talking about web engineering. Web-based systems and applications, what we call web apps, deliver a complex array of content and functionality to a broad population of end users. Web engineering is the process that is used to create high quality web apps. Web engineering is not a perfect clone of software engineering, but it borrows many of software engineering's fundamental concepts and principles. In addition, the web engineering process emphasizes similar technical and management activities. There are, however, subtle differences in the way these activities are conducted, but an overriding philosophy is identical, a disciplined approach to the development of a computer-based system with the intent of providing an end product that satisfies all stakeholders. In the early days of the web, we built systems using informality, urgency, intuition, and art. Informality leads to an easy work environment, one in which you can do your own thing. Urgency leads to action and rapid decision making. Intuition is an intangible quality that enables you to feel your way through complex situations. Art leads to aesthetic form and function, to something that pleases those who encounter it. The problem is this approach can and often does lead to problems in the development of web-based systems. As web apps become more larger and more complex, informality remains, but some degree of requirements gathering and planning are necessary. Urgency remains, but it must be tempered by a recognition that decisions may have broad consequences. Intuition remains, but it must be augmented by proven management and technical patterns. And art remains, but it must be complemented with solid design. Informality, urgency, intuition, and art do have a role to play in web engineering. But each of these forces should be moderated by a philosophy that works to reduce risk while at the same time improving the likelihood of success. And that leads us to a philosophy, a process, and a technology that we call web engineering. Before we begin our discussion of web engineering, it's important to understand the characteristics of the web. Not surprisingly, these characteristics have a direct influence on the way we build web-based applications. First, we'll talk about the web in general. Then we'll consider the many types of web applications and their attributes. With that as a foundation, we'll be ready to begin our journey into web engineering. The web is an indispensable technology in virtually every aspect of modern living. It's a transformative technology that changes the way we do things and changes the way we acquire and disseminate information. It's an evolving technology that will continually lead to new languages, new standards, and new protocols. The bottom line? The web represents a high-impact technology for everyone in the modern world. The web is big, both physically and culturally, but its impact goes beyond bigness. It's reasonable to assert that the web represents a global consciousness, a vast sea of data, information, knowledge, and even wisdom that represents the collective thinking of many different people, institutions, cultures, and nations. Some elements of the new global consciousness are relatively mundane. We can apply simple data mining techniques to merge information from seemingly unrelated web sources, thereby creating a new way of looking at the world. 
applications of this nature are often referred to as mashups. For example, information acquired from Google Maps can be combined with information from your website database to create a city map that shows the location of every installation of your products in a city. Other aspects of global consciousness are intriguing, but much more difficult to achieve. For example, it's now possible for advanced search engines to examine the universe of web sources, for example, blogs, online media, chat rooms, business data sources, online technical journals, and entertainment sites, all in an effort to extract trends for business, entertainment, or politics that could not be discerned from one or two web sources alone. Today, this internet sea washes over each of us. We surf, it's interesting that this term is used, looking for data, information, and knowledge. But we almost never get a glimpse at the consciousness that sees beneath the surface. As time passes and we move further into the 21st century, web engineers will begin to create systems that will enable all of us to extract data, information, and knowledge in novel ways and do more than skim across the surface. The term web application or web app encompasses everything from a simple web page that might help a consumer compute an automobile lease payment to a comprehensive website that provides complete travel services for business people and vacationers. Included within this category are complete websites, specialized functionality within websites, and information processing applications that reside on the internet or on an intranet or extranet. Let's examine some of the more technical attributes that, when taken in combination, help distinguish web apps from conventional software. We begin with network intensiveness. Every web app resides on a network and must serve the needs of a diverse community of end users. Another is concurrency. A large number of users may access the web app at one time. In many cases, the pattern of usage among end users will vary greatly. Because the needs of each category of end user can vary considerably, the web app must be capable of accommodating varied content, targeted functionality, and many different navigation flow paths. We have unpredictable load. The number of users of a web app may vary by orders of magnitude from day to day. We have performance. If a web app user must wait too long for access, for server-side processing, or for client-side formatting and display, he or she may decide to go elsewhere. Another key attribute is availability. Users of popular web apps often demand access on a 24-7, 365 basis. Another attribute is that web apps are data-driven. The primary function of many web apps is to use hypermedia to present text, graphics, audio, and video content to the end user. In addition, web apps are commonly used to access information that exists on databases that are not an integral part of the web-based environment, for example, e-commerce or financial applications. Content sensitivity is still another attribute. The quality and aesthetic nature of content remains an important determinant of the quality of a web app. For simple web apps, content tends to be static, but industry quality web apps often create content that is customized to a specific request by an end user. This dynamic content presents a new level of complexity that demands a more disciplined approach. Continuous evolution is still another attribute of web apps. Web apps evolve continuously. 
it is not unusual for some web apps, specifically their dynamic content, to be updated on a minute-by-minute -minute schedule, or for content to be independently computed for each request. Immediacy is still another attribute, although a characteristic of many application domains Web apps often exhibit a time to market that can be measured in a matter of a few days or weeks. Web engineers must use methods for planning, analysis, design, implementation, and testing that have been adapted to the compressed time schedules required for web app development. Another attribute is security. In order to protect sensitive content, and provide secure modes of data transmission, strong security measures must be implemented throughout the infrastructure that supports a web app and within the application itself. Aesthetics. When an application has been designed to market or sell products or ideas or provide services that generate revenue, aesthetics may have as much to do with success as technical design. When you use the term web app, you're really referring to something that lies on a broad spectrum of sophistication and complexity. There are a variety of different web app types, and it might be worthwhile to discuss them now. Informational web apps contain read-only content with simple navigation and links. For example, you decide to build a home page and a few supplementary pages that describe your company and its products and services. What you've done is to create an informational web app, one that contains read-only content with simple navigation and links. A download web app is just a bit different. A few weeks later, you begin to add content that describes the company's products in more detail. The product engineering department provides you with a PDF specification files describing each. You add a capability that allows visitors to download the product specs. The web app now incorporates informational and download capability. Customizable web apps. As you learn more from your stakeholders, it becomes apparent that you have four kinds of potential end users. You want to tailor the content presented at the website to the specific needs of each customer type. Using jargon and presenting concept, content that will meet their needs. You do a major overhaul of your initial web app and create a new one that is customizable for each user. Interaction web apps. Traffic increases rapidly, and before long, you have hundreds or thousands of visitors each day. You want to create a feeling of community among your visitors, a place where people can chat, ask and answer questions, provide product testimonials, and the like. You decide to implement an extension to the web app that supports a chat room feature. You've now provided an interactive component for your web app. The user input category is just a bit different. Company management wants you to move away from email and telephone calls, thereby reducing the need for support resources. You implement a forms-based input so that every request for quote is organized in a predictable manner. You still develop quotes using other automation, but at least you don't have to transcribe a, a wide variety of inputs.